Jack and Rocky, the Chelsea Delivery, Harry Crosser, and Charlie Boyce, and our group is examining the Syrian refugee crisis and its impacts and effects <coughs> on neighboring countries, specifically Lebanon, Jordan, Turkey, Germany, and France. I will begin with some historical background on the Syrian refugee crisis. The Syrian refugee crisis can trace its beginnings back to a man named Mohammed Al Azizi, who was a market list vendor in Tunisia in 2010. Uh, during this time, he, uh, he was selling uh, fruits and vegetables in the town marketplace and was approached by two police officers claiming that he was no longer allowed to sell there because he lacked a permit to do so. Well, as easy refused, claiming that it was his only source of income. Uh, the police woman actually responded by slapping him across the face in front of a large crowd of people. Publicly humiliated and outraged, Paul Azizi made it his goal to, uh, he made it his goal to uh, to protest the uh, oppressive nature of the Tunisian government. Things quickly escalated when he lit himself on fire in front of a main uh, Tunisian government building in front of a large crowd of people as he was a political cartoon. Uh, many uh, onlookers took videos and photos of the attack and spread them, and spread them throughout social media as they gained influence throughout the Middle East. Uh, right? There was Following this, there was a rise in citizen revolution over the oppressive regimes of various governments throughout the Middle East. Most of these times, it was the people versus the uh, injustices of the government, as seen in the picture on the left, where it says they, the people are together working against the injustice of the government, as seen in Egypt. Uh, this was when these rising revolts became known as what we now know as the Arab Spring in 2011. The spring spread to Syria in 2011 during the installation of Bashar al-Assad and the Assad regime. The Assad regime had torn apart the nation through controversial actions regarding the safety of their citizens. This led to a rebellion in the forming of four distinct groups within Syria, the Syrian Revolution, Syrian Opposition, ISIS, and the Democratic Federation of Northern Syria. The country became war-torn and dangerous for its citizens who feared for their safety and protection of their basic rights. So they migrated to nearby nations, which we now know as the Syrian refugee crisis. I will now be handing it off to Chelsea, who will be examining the socio-political effects of the Syrian refugee crisis in the Middle East. Thank you. Currently, Turkey is the main safe haven for Syrian refugees due to its proximity to Syria, as seen above, with a number of reaching 3.5 million. Turkey's official policy towards refugees is a temporary protection rule which grants refugees free unlimited health care, access to education, and working permits. However, this policy of implementation has been hindered due to multiple reasons, one of which is a lack of political focus caused by the emergency rule under President Tayyip Erdogan. Because of this, Erdogan has a large amount of power to suspend Turkish, Turkish rights and freedom, with a sparked concern internationally. Another reason for Turkey's hindrance of refugee policy is a growing anti-refugee sentiment spreading across Turkish society. This can be seen in the fact that the Turkish government labels migrants as guests and does not grant them refugee status. According to an interview conducted by anthropologist Sene Austin, Turkish government workers believe that the guest status means that Syrians do not have rights. Moving on to Lebanon, <clears throat> Lebanon has 1.5 million Syrian refugees, again due to the fact that it neighbors Syria. Due to Lebanon's status as a multi-faith nation, different ideologies of various religions have created splits in policy. There are two main Lebanese coalitions that have become involved in Syria. Shia Muslims and Hezbollah have aligned themselves with the Large Gate Coalition, which is in direct support of President Bashar al-Assad. On the other hand, Sunni Muslims and the Future Movement have become aligned with the March 14th Coalition, which directly supports the Syrian opposition. Both coalitions act against each other, mostly on behalf of political interests, rather than on behalf of refugees. Christian groups are the ones within Lebanon that have become increasingly concerned with the influx of Syrian refugees, of which the majority are Muslim. From the perspective of the Christians, such a sudden growth in the population of one religion could destroy the delicate balance between religions that has been so carefully crafted in Lebanon. In Jordan, there are currently over 650,000 registered Syrian refugees. Similar to Turkey, Jordan has experienced a growth in anti-refugee sentiment that has hindered progress. With the deteriorating economy, government officials and citizens have raised their concerns about Syrians stealing job opportunities away from Jordanians. This caused Jordan to, in Jordan to increase its restrictions on working permits for Syrian refugees. However, in recent years, there have been signs that Jordan may change, an example of this being the Jordan Compact. 
This deal, led by the UK, turns the Syrian refugee crisis into a development opportunity. Officially, it pledges for Jordan to further open up the job market to Syrian refugees. And in return, the international powers involved in the deal would provide an increased amount of funds for Jordan's capacity to host refugees, which would undoubtedly improve the conditions within Jordan's host community. <coughs> I will pass it off to Tyler to talk about the political ramifications of the crisis. All right, thank you, Chelsea. Um, so, the extreme overflow of refugees has created an instable region around Syria and has forced many asylum seekers to seek other alternative host countries in Europe. So, according to this map, Germany, Hungary, and France have been the largest European participants in this crisis, but in our presentation, we'll mostly focus on Germany and France since a large political divide is. Um, is present in both of these nations. As a refugee, as refugees poured into Germany and France, open border policy was developed. This enables free movement between separate jurisdictions and acquires limited restrictions on this movement. This was an attempt to solve the crisis of the amount of displaced people by guaranteeing their countries a safe place of refuge. So Chancellor Merkel of Germany and France is Holland of France both believe it was is the responsibility of an economically stable sovereign state to accept that, that can, uh, accept as many asylum seekers as necessary. This attempt of a solution may hold more weight, but several implications have arisen from open world policy, such as the extreme amount of undocumented immigrants and the uh, exponential rise in terrorism. This was evident when Germany accepted nearly one million asylum seekers and only half of them are actually registered. Also, with the Paris attack in 2015, where 100 friends, 130 French citizens were died from terrorist gunmen and suicide bombers. With these implications present, right-wing politics has taken uh, a notable uprise in um, France and Germany. So France's right-wing National Front candidate, Marine Le Pen, and Germany's Alternative for Germany candidate, Alice Modell, have taken advantage of the growing discontentment in their countries and have highlighted the failure of the left's open world policies and have, have exposed inconsistencies with moderates. So the critical message in this political cartoon expresses the frustration of the right wing in Germany. Chancellor Merkel is inviting birds by feeding them and is soon regarded with an uh, excessive amount of birds and is sent to a state of panic. All right, so this political cartoon criticizes the nature of open world policy by its ability to allow threats, such as the individual without in the background. All right, now I'll be heading off to Eric Ross to explain the economic influence of the, of the Syrian civil war. The economic effects of refugees often, <coughs> often overshadow the effects that the most immigrants bring to a country. Many of the refugees will face <coughs> un unemployment and will rely on the, on the government for assistance and security. While it may not cost much initially, the large the numbers add up, and with each refugee as estim estimated to cost about 3,500 US dollars, the governments are not receiving enough money to pay for the expense. Samar El Yassir, Lebanon's director of American Near East Refugee Aid stated that because of the refugees, unemployment in Lebanon rose to 20%. Skilled workers are in demand in most countries, and because of that, they, they have an easier time finding a job. But and many other refugees are are unskilled workers, and with the sudden rush into the surrounding countries, a demand for them has not yet rose, leaving them unemployed. As you can see up here, Lebanon's GDP per capita has had a downward trend since 2011 when. But Shar al Assad took control of Syria in 2011 and the Syrian civil war began. And 
this is also re reflected in their debt to GDP ratio, which saw an, an increase from 2012, which shows that their debt is is increasing at a, at a faster rate than, than they are than, than making for the country overall. And uh, Jordan's GDP per capita trend is also similar to Lebanon's, with a downward trend peak beginning in 2010. And we can also see in, in Jordan's debt to GDP ratio that um, that there will but was a spike from 2011 to 2012, most likely because of the refugees from the beginning of the Syrian civil war. One possible solution our group has examined is the increased discussion between G7 nations and the leaders of the migrant nations these uh, refugees are migrating to. And we chose the G7 nations because they are some of the most uh, powerful countries in the world and exert the most political influence. So, uh, the overall goal of the increased discussion is to find a set location for these migrants that, one, does not infringe on any one nation's uh, sovereignty, and two, on the place to safely protect not only the rights, but the overall safety of these refugees. So, our second uh, solution proposes that the United Nations needs to take an increased role in the nation of Syria by attempting to relieve tensions between the multiple parties and establish a more stable government for the citizens of Syria. The implications of our first proposal would be that the leaders of some of the most successful nations in the international community further negotiate deals involved in the Syrian crisis. This would be especially useful, seeing as how progress was made in Jordan due to the negotiation of the Jordan Compact between the international community. However, limitations with this solution arise due to the fact that various nations have different agendas, making it harder for leaders to come to an agreement that would ultimately please everyone. Our second proposed solution, which calls for an increase in UN intervention within the region, would mean that the United Nations would have a bigger presence in Syria and the surrounding regions than it already has, which would help to improve conditions in those communities. However, this solution could be limited because in order to carry this out, the UN would need an increased amount of funding for its Syrian refugee programs, which are already underfunded. Additionally, some countries in the region, such as Turkey, dislike international intervention and could potentially view this as a breach on their national sovereignty. Okay. The Syrian refugee crisis has had an enormous impact on the human geography in the Middle East. While European politicians and the UN argue about policy regarding refugees, the economic downturn of the surrounding countries show that it is a progressing issue. All in all, the Syrian refugee crisis has proven to be a complicated issue that is in dire need of solving. perspectives or lenses or conclusions into the overall presentation. Okay, well, our group decided to include Jack's um, lens, the historical lens, by like providing context on the crisis because so many people don't understand the inner workings of the Syrian refugee crisis, which was, it's important to know like where it started in order to know how to solve it. Jack, in what way did you improve your ability to work with a group as a result of this project? Uh, I improved my ability because uh, through just the talking as a group, uh, narrowing down the topic uh, was mainly because of an increase in discussion and working together. Uh, before we had a 
or your topic that we narrow down through focusing on each other's lenses, specifically as those of you who have this uh, political lens, we're able to narrow down to just the senior IP crisis and the main nations affected. So overall, it increased my ability of communication and be able to narrow down the topic of the network overall provide the best uh, solution possible. Thank you. Uh, Eric, what is an example of an argument from one of your peers in the visual world that you decided to exclude from your team presentation and why did you decide to not include it? Okay. So, in Chelsea's research report, we decided against using her research on Turkey and their policy regarding refugees, um, specifically about um, health care and per permits, because we thought it wasn't um, it wasn't it wasn't significant enough to our her presentation to show the social, political, and economic effects on, on other countries. Thank you, Eric. And finally, Tyler, what's a way in which your team's resolution makes you think differently about your own individual research? Okay, yeah, so understanding their, their lenses and incorporation of mine is a very important task because in Syria, there's multiple parties um, involved in understanding the economic influence of, you know, the surrounding countries of Syria really helps me understand what solutions might be possible in Syria and our overall solution as, as you know, as a world. And also um, understanding the historical background of it, like you know, the Arab Spring and the conflicts there and the multiple parties involved in that, you know, situation. So overall, it's understanding the better topic of you know, all of us really uh, develops our overall solution. Thank you.